And welcome back to Sports on Tap. It's our Ohio High School football coverage. Week three recap. From Studio J in Brunswick, I'm Rob Troutman. We have Josh Jeffy, Eddick, Sean Duffy, who's clapping and getting excited with uh, his football, baby. Dang. Wow. Hot, hot really, mic. really excited. There. Hot mic there. My bad. Josh is finding some great high school bands that uh, have played on our show. want to thank them all for. Do they have 290 members like the Solon Marching Band? No, but it's Solon. I thought it was Stowe. Hey, Solon. hey if oh. there's a high school Solon, band out there that Solon wants to. Solon had like five buses just for their band. I'm not even kidding you. Hmm. If uh, any high school bands want to, uh, you know, play a song for our show, we'll gladly play it all throughout the air. Waves and, here and, and Rob Sports will. Uh, and, and when we're at the games, we will videotape your band. That's right. Bada bing, bada boom. Not the halftime show because we'd have to be up high. There's a whole nine. Yeah, know, there's a whole thing to towards in. that. Yeah. But you know, let's uh, jump right into the suburban league, the I'll national love. division, Ed. And uh, how did your games go this week? Well, this is the last week of uh, non-conference slash divisional play. Uh, at the end of it, we have two undefeated teams and two winless teams left. Each category does contain a team, which, based on recent history, comes as no surprise. Uh, but there's also a team uh, heading in opposite directions, also from past play. Uh, so we'll get into it here. We'll start in Medina, where the 2-0 Wadsworth Grizzlies faced off against the 1-1 Medina Bees in a Medina County battle as Josh talked about a little bit about earlier. Uh, the Grizzlies were looking to avoid the first three-game losing streak to Medina in uh, over 70 years. Uh, Wadsworth quarterback Joey Bachman continued his fast start to the season, opening up with a five-yard scoring run. Uh, Medina didn't answer with their own touchdown uh, before Bachman uh, completed a 23-yard touchdown pass to Brock Snowball for a 14-7 lead, and Wadsworth pulled away from there. Uh, two more touchdown passes from Bachman to Wide receiver Christian, um, I apologize for this. Uh, Zale covering 29 and 6 yards. Um, at the end of the day, it was a 44-7 victory for the Grizzlies. Bachman finished, finished the game completing 29 of 41 passes for 274 yards and three touchdowns. He also rushed 13 times for 118 yards and two more TDs. Uh, uh, Christian Zale... Caught 13 passes for 126 yards and two touchdowns. Brock Snowball did it both on the ground and through the air. Eight rushes for 50 yards and five catches for 78 yards and a touchdown. With the win, Wadsworth improves to 3-0. They are going to start Suburban League National Division play at Macedonia Nordonia. Medina is 1-2. They will open up against Greater Cleveland Conference foe Euclid. All right, in the first of three Suburban League crossover battles, dun, 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 dun. the 2-0 North Worldton Bears hosted the 2-0 Medina Highland Hornets. Uh, the, Hi the Hornets traveled up Ridge Road and del delivered a resounding statement. Yes, they did. Uh, the Hornets uh, got off to a 21 to nothing start. Um, you know, and this will be a game that uh, you know for the next three games. This these are all battles between myself and Mr. Duffy over right, there. So right, we will absolutely. we will. Uh, I'm gonna stick to dum, my dum, guys. Dum. Sean will stick to his guys yep, while uh, we yep, uh, yep yep while we discuss this. Um, so the Hornets got up to a 21 to nothing lead before North Worlton sophomore quarterback Joey Marusic completed a 50 yard touchdown pass to Adam Barrett. However, the Bears could not solve the aggressive Hornets defense. Uh, Highland comes away with a 42. To 14 victory. Marusic completed 15 of 27 passing for 279 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, he did connect with a 60 yard uh, touchdown pass to wide receiver Miles Sternad. Uh, this was after the game was well out of reach. Yeah, I mean, Highland came in, and, and you know what the, fun, the, the interesting thing was? Highland was actually down two playmakers. Brent Ponivar and Max Beer were not playing that, and, and, but it just did not slow down the offense or the defense. Uh, Matthew Ernest ended up 6 for 7, 194 yards, three touchdowns. Wide receiver Ryan Frederick had two pass receptions for 103 yards and a touchdown. And Jake St. Louis scored on a 64-yard touchdown pass. And the all, all over the field was Jake Rogers. Back at it again, third week in a row. Nine carries, 54 yards and a touchdown. 23, 26 receiving yards and a touchdown. A 44-yard punt return that led to a touchdown and one interception. So, I mean, Highland came in, and this was a statement game. And, and you have to remember, they're going in, and, and, and they are making a statement with, it, with an experienced team. They are not suffering any sort of doubt 
and, and, and not leaving any doubt in anyone's mind to take on the teams that they've taken on, like Brunswick, Medina, North Royalton, and now they're going into the conference play where, you know, Aurora, and I'll get to this a little bit later, is not seeming as as insurmountable as them. But now you have teams like Barberton, and you have teams like uh, Revere, and now you have teams like Talmadge that are coming in with a lot of, a lot of you know, saying, hey, we could take this now, and Highland's having none of it. The, I believe Highland is really setting themselves apart in the American division and for the playoffs going ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, that defense is, uh, was in, was was very stout. Uh, they forced Marusic into two interceptions, and they were all over running back Zach Antonio. They didn't. They weren't. They, you know, they, they were not able to. Uh, the Bears were just not, not able to get on track. Uh, with the loss, North World Ten drops to two and one. They will travel to Stone Monroe's and Stone Monroe Falls to open up league play. And Highland improves to three and zero, and they will travel to Kent Roosevelt in Week Four, who are our one and two. Very well. All right. The next Suburban League crossover matchup takes us to Aurora. Ooh. The 1-1 one one Twidsburg Tigers taking on the 0-2 and Greenman. Um, and your Greenman got the uh, got to a very, very quick start. Yes, they did. To start this game. Yes, they did. Gavin Blunt uh, had two kickoff returns in the first quarter, both for the same amount of yards. Uh, and it was two touchdowns that he scored with, along with a rushing touchdown. And then Aurora's Alex D'Amico had an 85-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter that forced an overtime period against these two teams. So Aurora, despite all that, unfortunately, just could not handle Twinsburg. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Tigers did answer with a 27-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Adam Van de Motter to wide receiver Trey Radford. Um, as uh, Sean mentioned, the Tigers apparently did not learn the lesson from the first kickoff, <laughs> and uh, you know Blunt hit him up for another 98-yard touchdown, and eventually got uh, the, the Greenman took a 27 a 21 to 7 lead in the game. Uh, Twinsburg did tie it up on a three-yard touchdown run by running back Cameron McLean, and another eight-yard touchdown reception by Christian Edgerson uh, from quarterback Seth Grabowski. Um, Edgerson then caught an 88-yard touchdown pass from uh, Grabowski to take a 28-21 to lead going into the fourth quarter. As uh, Sean mentioned, Aurora did tie it up. Uh, Blunt, Blunt with, a, with a touchdown uh, to tie Alex D'Amico with, with an 85-yard touchdown catch from Fromm Wooler. And then uh, Twinsburg was able to get on the board. They had a six-yard touchdown run by running back Isaiah, uh, Isaiah Savitt. Um, leading the game up to Twinsburg's D against Aurora's offense. Yep, and unfortunately, they were not able to c to come back and score in the overtime period. And Twinsburg ends up getting out of Aurora with a tough overtime victory. And this makes Aurora 0 and 3 going into conference play. There, I mean, they had a pretty tough non-conference schedule to begin with, but you thought that at least they'd be able to pull one out. So you know, the Aurora Greenman and the Greenman uh, faithful are uh, kind of maybe in a stunned position. Very much, and, I, and I maybe assume very much like Menor was, uh, I think, last year or the year before when they just they, – there was a lot of, you know, there wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, unsuredness around them, if that's even a word. Uh, but well, it, it is now. Yeah, so I mean, good it's job just, out of you. This, is, this is not something that Aurora is used to going into conference play without a win on the year. So they're going to have to uh, – they're actually going to have to bring it a little bit in the, in the next week when they uh, go on the road and play undefeated Talmadge. Uh, in week four, and, and Talmadge is no easy out at this point with the running game they have. Uh, Twinsburg improves to what, Ed? Twinsburg is 2-1. and one. Uh, They're going to travel to Cuyahoga Falls, an 0-3 team to start league play. Um, some some quick stats here. Seth Grabowski was 9 of 10 passing for 216 yards and two touchdowns. Adam Vandemotter was uh, 5 of 11 for 89 yards and a touchdown. Running back Cameron McLean rushed 34 times for 136 yards and a touchdown. Wide receivers Christian Edgerson, he had five catches for 127 and two touchdowns. Trey Radford was five catches for 84 yards and a touchdown. Um, you know, Twinsburg and Aurora are kind of uh, right now they're at a they're kind of heading in different directions. Yeah. You know, I talked a little bit about this in the preview that Twinsburg. Even though they were taking a lot of losses last year, they started out, they, they finished on a hot streak, and their offense really started to find their stride last year because a lot of yeah, guys were yeah, young. Yeah, they did. Uh, Vandermotter, McLean, Radford, and Edgerson were all young guys. Mm -hmm. And you know, now they've matured. They have another year under their belt, and they are a very formidable team uh, going, into, going into conference play. Aurora... Like you said, Sean, you can't discount how tough that schedule right. was. I mean, yeah. you're playing two Division One schools, 
uh, a Division two school in, in Twinsburg. They are, they resign in Division three, Region nine. Yeah, and you know Talmadge is a great start. If they can get you'll get that victory over Talmadge, and then you still have Barberton and Highland who are performing extremely well right now. Not to mention Copley. Copley, um, you have a three and no team at the end of their schedule, uh, and and Mifflin. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Roar can run the table, right, maybe absolutely. even get six wins and probably still get in. Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, and look, and you could conceivably see all, all six of those wins. Again, it just you, you wonder what the mindset of an Aurora team is. They're not used to having this type of adversity. Usually they're coming into conference play with one, maybe two losses, not to, not to be 0 oh in the season going into conference play. That puts a lot of pressure. And, again, we talk about this all the time, margin of error. Aurora doesn't have a lot. I mean, Not anymore. The, you know, you don't have those signature wins against the Division One school to, to build points, and that's we're starting to get into that point of the season where, okay, your resume has to speak to points, and you don't have any right now. You, you, don't, you don't have any points, so you have to get them where you can, and unfortunately, the opportunity for Aurora to really bank on some wins that some teams like, like Solon, like Euclid, and now like Twinsburg, they don't have it anymore. They, they, they're, they're no, so now they have to win out and maybe do a little bit of scoreboard watching and hope that you that's know tough. other teams win. And that's a tough thing for people to do. You know, the good thing, the the the, the thing that Coach Mahala can can bring to the team here is all your goals are really still in front of you. Absolutely, right? You still have all your conference games, and they are in a row. Yes. So you can conceivably win the conference before you even get into Week Ten. Exactly. And then Week Ten, you play a, a, right now a three and O team. We don't know how they'll finish out, but. Yeah. If you win this conference, you're probably going to make the playoffs, especially in Division Three, where the you know they they can get some good wins over some Division Two teams that will get them a little bit more points. Uh, you know, in the in the region in the level one area, you know everything's still in front of Aurora. So I mean, you know, this week you, you hit the reset button. Yep. You say, you know what, those first three games you can't do anything about it now. This is where we're at. Let's let's win our conference and then let's see where the chips fall because you know, unlike years past, I think with this conference. You're starting to see some other teams develop, uh, and might, that might change once we get in the conference play. Yeah, yeah. And some of the some of the teams that had good non-conference may not so do yeah. so well in conference. I mean, but there's always that possibility, Eddie. You're absolutely right. And one of the things that I you know I look on the schedule that I wasn't expecting was that Aurora and Talmadge game in you know week four is going to be so pivotal, not only for Aurora but for Talmadge. I mean, Talmadge is three and zero. And they have a pretty respectable run game. I mean, they eked a couple wins out. But that, like I said, galvanizes a team. You know, that Ty Shannon, he wasn't my player of the week for nothing in week one. The guy can run the ball, and they're, and they're using him as the focal point, and it's working for Talmadge. So I don't know with how that – that's an interesting game that I'm interested to follow ne next Friday night because it's going to tell – probably tell the, you know, the tale going forward for both of these teams. Um, not to say Talmadge can't recover from a loss to Aurora, but – if Aurora falls to zero and four, I, I don't know what what happens at that point. Yeah, I don't know if they'll be able to dig, dig themselves out of that hole, uh, especially with some of their upcoming opponents. Uh, the third and uh, final suburban league crossover contest saw the zero and two Cuyahoga Falls Black Tigers host the two and zero Barberton Magics. The Magics were all over the Black yeah. Tigers, uh, chopping tw twenty seven to nothing first quarter and forty seven to nothing halftime lead. Uh, that included two pick sixes of Cuyahoga Falls quarterback Ty Vassilotti. Um, I'll let Sean talk about his guys because there's a lot more to talk about. But um, real quick, the Black Tigers were able to get on the board behind touchdown runs from Vassilotti, James Cross, and Tyler Hitchings in the second half. Wide receiver Deshaun uh, Brazil caught five passes for 94 yards and a uh, 47 to, I believe, 20 or 20, 20, 20, 47 yeah. to 20 uh, absolute shellacking uh, from Barberton to Kyle Falls. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of the tale of two halves. I don't know what it, if Barberton had maybe their second unit in, but the 47 nothing lead at halftime, obviously you're talking running clock. Obviously you're talking probably not having your starters in. Right. But the starters did the work. I mean, my, my hat's off to Garrett Turnbaugh, who turned in a fantastic performance. The guy had eight receptions, 213 yards, Jesus. two offensive touchdowns, and one of those pick sixes, he ran it back. So, I mean, the wow. guy the guy had two, two, two touchdown receptions for 16 yards and 90 yards. So, I mean, the offense was flowing through him, not to be outdone. Barberton quarterback Zane Reese, who also finished the game 12 of 14, 
267 yards and two Dang. touchdowns on the night. That's as close to perfect as you could be. You only dropped, you only missed two passes on the night. I mean, Atta, this was this that is, deserves an attaboy. That deserves an attaboy. There's a lot of chocolate milk going there. A lot there. of chocolate <laughs> milk, but I, but you know, one of the things that I wrote here, and I and I, when I was reading over everything, courtesy of the Cleveland.com, was just Barberton's offense has just been spectacular these past three weeks. At no point are they uh, are they, are they really out of games to where you know it's or are they even really in a game? I mean, they've been just really on top of, of defenses, and they're frustrating opposing defenses because they can either beat you running the ball or they can beat you throwing the ball. And then on the defensive side of the ball, they're scoring. They're taking plays. They're taking the ball away from the opposing offenses and turning it into points, which is a devastating combination. Coupling that with Aurora slide and non-conference, Barberton has got to be the prohibitive favorite entering conference play right now for the Suburban American League because I don't see, outside of a Highland defense, which I'm really excited to see that game, because I think that could be a really fun game to watch, Highland versus Barberton. I really do think those are the top two teams that I expect a lot of here. You know, Copley's still there. Aurora's still there. But the but right now, Barberton is staking a claim saying, we are the team to beat in the American division, and, and we are here to stay. So congratulations. I actually put Garrett Turnbull is now my player of the week, given that performance. I mean, the guy was all over the place. You know, it was tough. It was a, it was a coin flip between him and Jake Rogers from Highland because – Jake Rogers, for the third time, has done everything. So, Jake, I promise, keep turning in performances like that. You're going to get the player of the week. But I had to give it to Garrett here because he would, just had a fantastic night and literally accounted for three of the 18 touchdowns that were scored <laughs> <laughs> against Cuyahoga Falls. All right, Cuyahoga Falls with the loss. They dropped to 0-3. They're going to host 2-1 Twinsburg to open up Suburban League National Division play. And Barberton improves to three and zero, and they will go. They will host Revere in Week Four to open up American Division play. All right, uh, I'm going to wrap up the Suburban League National Division here. Uh, next, we will travel to Willoughby, where the one and one Brexville Broadview Heights. I believe they say B. The B. They John s- kills it. Man. They battled the zero and two Willoughby South Rebels. The Rebels did get on the board early with an 18 yard touchdown pass from quarterback Steven. Uh, boy, I'm gonna. I apologize for you right away for this one. Um, De Houston, De Houstonio, uh, to uh, quarterback, uh, to wide receiver, uh, Drew Shepler, uh, bees, bees. Freshman quarterback Joe Labas answered with a 30-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Sam Wigloos. He also tapped on another score via a seven-yard touchdown run from Michael Rose. The Rebels tied it up at 14. Labas then found wide receiver Kenny Ganley for a 24-yard touchdown pass and a 21-14 halftime lead. Labas found Wigloos again for a 60-yard touchdown pass, and the Bees were able to ride that cushion to a 42-21 victory over Willoughby South. Joe Labas, he threw freshman. three freshman. Freshman. He threw three touchdowns. He also threw three interceptions for the Bees. The Bees defense. Uh, the Bees defense did play very tough. They forced a fumble. They also got two interceptions of their own. Uh, with the win. The Brexville Broadview Heights Bees improved to two and one. They will open up league play against Hudson. Willoughby South is 0 3. They will travel to 1 and 2 Madison. 0 and 2 Macedonia Nordonia. The Knights they travel to 1 and 1 Mayfield. The Knights hung tough with the Wildcats for the first half, taking a 17 to 16 lead. Uh, the Wildcats had none of that going into the second half. They really put it on the Knights. They scored 21 unanswered points, and they ran away with a 51 to 24 victory. One of the highlights was a touchdown pass uh, caught by Donnie Wisniak for the Knights. Uh, right now, uh, similar to last season, they're just having trouble getting on track. To getting on track, um, and 0 and 3 is uh, not a good place to be going into conference play with this uh, with this with the national division. Nordonia. Winless 0-3. They're going to host 3-0 Wadsworth to open league play. Mayfield will start Western Reserve Conference play against 2-1 Lyndhurst Brush. Our last contest. It's a battle of top area teams as the 2-0 Hudson Explorers travel to Canton to take on the 2-0 McKinley Bulldogs at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Hudson started the game with a solid drive, but Colt uh, Colt Palais was intercepted by Lonnie Richardson Parr at the goal line. The Explorers had another promising drive. This ended in a very, very, very rare field goal miss by kicker Grant Gagne. From there, it was all Bulldogs as 
Uh, quarterback Elijah Curtis hit wide receiver John Mack for touchdowns of 16, 23, and 20 yards for a 20 yard, uh, 20 to zero lead early in the third. McKinley, they were able to get a running clock on Hudson here. They pushed their lead to 32 to nothing before Pelay uh, was able to get his team on the board with a uh, touchdown pass to Kevin Callahan. He followed that up with a 69 yard touchdown pass to Greg Maley. Then he also ran for a seven yard touchdown. Uh, Pelay hit Callahan as time expired um, for another touchdown. Uh, it all added up to a 39-27 to loss. Uh, McKinley really handled the Explorers here. Um, Pelay ended up with some pretty uh, gaudy stats, but I have to think that that was really more in garbage time. He ended up with 336 yards passing and three touchdowns to go with his one rushing touchdown. Um, you know, McKinley, it, it's not very often you see Hudson uh, you know, get a put on him like that, but, you know, McKinley, they're they're proven to be a, they're they're traditionally a very tough team, um, and and Hudson, you know, got to see that uh, Hudson got to see that up close and personal there for sure, yeah. um, yeah, but it, it is what it is at this point, uh, with the loss, Hudson, they are now two and one. They are going to host two and one Brexville Broadview Heights. Ken McKinley is 3 and 0. They're going to open up Federal League action hosting 2 and 1 Green. Uh we talk we all have a more re- full report on this uh later uh, in the next segment. Uh Stowe Monroe Falls, they did get a 17 to 14 victory over the Stolen Comets and the guys were there uh providing great coverage as always. Uh so we'll go over that here in a little bit. Uh the Suburban League National Player of the Week is Twinsburg wide receiver Christian Edgerson. Five catches for 127 yards, two touchdowns, one of which was an 88-yard touchdown uh, reception. Uh, you know to get, you know that that I believe to get the Tigers over the hump, uh, over Aurora. Um, you know if you look at the distribution here real quick of the suburban league national league division teams, you have two three and zero teams, four two and one teams, and two zero oh and three teams. You know so you, you got, you know you see so you, you know six out of the, six out of the eight teams are. Playing the over 500 ball at the moment, so yeah. you know a lot of a lot of good stuff coming from the non-conference season uh, for the suburbly national division. Um, maybe not so much this week against the American division, but nope. <laughs> um, you know, very very good things to come. I'm looking very forward to the uh, to the slate of games coming up next week in the suburbly national division. Uh, to wrap up the American division, uh, my colleague, my compadre, my cohort, uh, Sean Duffy will. Uh, We'll, we'll go over the rest of the American Division scores. Thanks, Ed. Uh, right now we're going to move on to Copley traveling to Uniontown Lake. Copley was able to score 21 points in the second quarter and then decided to let the defense ride it out in the second half as they didn't score another point again. Uh, but Uniontown Lake did make this a game, ended up coming down to the last and a missed extra point, cost Uniontown Lake a victory, and Copley was able to secure a victory. Uh, quarter, Copley quarterback Jacob Nedelatz had six completions for 106 yards and two touchdowns. And Copley running back Blake Trailer had 20 carries for 90 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Copley improves to two and one. Travels to take on Bedford in Week Four as there because there's only seven teams in the league. They have to play another non-conference game, so they play a very tough Bedford Bearcats team in Week Four. Moving on, the battle for the Big R Trophy against Kent Roosevelt and Ravenna. This was a 14-14 game going into the fourth quarter when a fumble by by Kent Roosevelt gave the ball to Ravenna, who senior Joe Horvath, who scored on a touchdown on a touchdown recovery for the fumble, and Ravenna ends up getting the Big R Trophy again this year. And Kent Roosevelt falls to one and two, and they will host Highland, who is three and zero in Week Four. So that's going to be a big matchup for them. Uh, one thing about this game was a very defensive battle. But the score, the points were scored in the first two quarters, and then really kind of were back and forth in the third up until the fourth when that fumble, you know, when Ravenna's defense forced that fumble and returned it. Uh, my final game uh, for the American League is Revere ho- uh, hosting Firestone, and this was not really a game. Revere com- had complete control of this game from the start. Uh, Revere's Matt running back Matt Busser had a five-yard touchdown run and a 44-yard touchdown reception on the night. And Revere's defense also scored in a 15-yard fumble recovery to beat the Fires to beat Firestone 28 to six. Revere ends up two and one in non-conference play and will travel to play three and zero Barberton in Week Four. I also want to go ahead and touch on the Buckeye Bucks as they took on the Cloverleaf. I have no idea what they're Colts. Colts, thank you. Colts. Sorry, sorry, apologize. 
Uh, Buckeye, admittedly, uh, and, and, and this was great coverage again by the Madani Gazette, but Buckeye did not play their best game in this game. Uh, they ended up winning 28-14, to but they had to rely on some big plays, uh, specifically from Buckeye quarterback Adam Favre, who really was the focal point. 7 for 11 passing, 121 yards, and two touchdowns. Also had 17 carries, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Running back Dominic Monaco finished with 18 carries, 127 yards, and a touchdown. And Monaco's late touchdown actually put the game away as uh, as Cloverleaf was a was a stout opponent for Buckeye's defense and offense this this week. Uh, Buckeye will look to improve. Uh, well, again, improves the three and zero. Will look to continue their winning ways as they host Lutheran West in Week Four. Guys, the American League, the American Division, is a pretty competitive one. Uh, every team has a win. There's no, there's no unbeaten t- un, or non-win teams right now. I think this is the week. I mean, we have some pretty good matchups right now. Talmadge and Aurora is actually a more surprising game. I'm interested to see how Revere and uh, Barberton stack up. I think that may be a good game with met with a guy like Matt Busser. You want to see if Highlands defense can stop him and force him to throw the ball. Uh, you mean Barberton? Barberton, defense? sorry. And you also wonder if any if Bar- if any defense is really going to stop Barberton at this point because it seems as though Barberton can just do whatever it wants on offense. Now again, we saw it with Buckeye. Sometimes you don't play your greatest game. Sometimes you just you you, you don't have it that night. But what what Buckeye did is what Highland would have to do if that happens is you got to find a way to overcome. Buckeye didn't play a great game, uh, and and the coaches and the players will admit that readily admitted that in the Madonna Gazette article, uh, but. They found a way to win, and that's important right now because you want to make sure you're not putting yourself in a position, as far as computer points go, where you're having to scoreboard watch. Barberton would like nothing more than to sew up the division and sew up a, a really nice playoff spot and a home playoff spot come really early in the season. They could do that by as early as, I think, week eight, if you look at their schedule. Uh, they, they If they can get past the Roar, they can pretty much in Highland, they can, uh, they can pretty much sew up a, a pretty good playoff spot. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen Aurora in uh, these kind of circumstances uh, with three straight losses yeah. to start the season. So I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see how they respond losing the first three games and, and if they can you know get back on track. Because like you said, if they have to win out, I mean, that's a pretty tough thing to do um, no matter what team you are. And, and when you look at Revere against Barberton, I think they have a pretty good shot, um, you know, to compete in that game. But Barberton, you know, they're always at the top. You know how is Revere going to compete? They're two and one on the year, very impressive. And, but and, and team like Ta- team's and again, tough. I, I wouldn't discount. Sorry to interrupt you there. I still wouldn't discount a team like Talmadge. Uh, oh, I actually missed the Talmadge game. I apologize for that. Did I? I thought you covered them, but no. You mentioned that you mentioned that they won in their. Uh, yes, they did. I apologize. I did. Talmadge actually went. Sorry about that. Talmadge traveled to Coventry, and Talmadge weathered a great performance <laughs> from Coventry's Trayon Sibley to squeak out a comeback win in Week 3. Talmadge quarter, running back Ty Shannon was the focal point of the comeback. He had 39 yards rushing, but two touchdowns, and five receptions for 68 yards and a touchdown. Talmadge quarterback Sam Seeker went 15 of 40, 236 yards with one touchdown and two interceptions. Talmadge improves to 3-0, and and they will host Aurora in conference play. Sorry about that. Blue Devils, I apologize. You guys were on the next page, and I missed it because I had I did not organize my thoughts correctly. So big shout out to the Talmadge Blue Devils. Congratulations on your win. Congratulations, congratulations on three and zero. And as I was making the point to you, Rob, it's going to be a fun game. I think I really do think that Talmadge has a shot going against a team like Aurora. You, you never know. Yeah. Well, it's going to be uh, fun to see what happens next week. Great job, guys, on the uh, American and National Division. Mediocre job on my end. In the I'll, Suburban I'll League. That. A nice recovery, though. Yeah. Nice Good recovery. recovery. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> We're Sports on Tap. It's our week three recap for Ohio High School, uh, our football coverage. We're going to step away, take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about our game of the week, week three recap. We'll go over the game, uh, have some uh, a head coach interview and a player interview from that game uh, with Stowe, Monroe Falls, and Solon, and much more when we come back. It's Sports on Tap, our Ohio high school football coverage. <laughs> 